It really modernizes the car by a lot in my opinion. It looks really good. I like it. Phone music, maps, messages, now playing Google Maps. So it does have navigation. It looks like an iPhone in your car. Welcome back to another video. Today is going to be a short and quick tutorial on installing a double din stereo on the 3000 GT VR4. I currently do have the stereo and all the stuff we're going to need to install it here in this box. And I will be linking everything in the description in case you guys are trying to do it to your car as well. As you guys know, it did skip timing. So I'm currently still waiting for the timing belt kit. I ended up going with an OEM timing belt, other components and a solid tensioner so stay tuned for that video as it will be very informative on how to do a timing belt job on this car and i'm just super excited to hopefully have it back on the road and running soon so we can start taking it out uh, but i did want to go ahead and unbox the stereo for you guys show you guys the product and then from there show you how i install it on my car and of course it should look a lot better than the old single din alpine stereo we have on there right now i feel like that's outdated it only plays a cds um, and radio and i personally need a bluetooth because i like to play music from uh, my own phone like spotify or apple music here we have the box um, it does come with a rear camera here is the main din so you guys can see i ended up going with the toto brand this is what you use to basically wire into your harness i see a microphone some sort of mounting brackets like a faceplate of some sort and here we have the double dense stereo looks pretty sweet and i think i'll modernize the interior a lot more which is what i was really going for pretty solid feel to it doesn't feel cheap doesn't feel light so we do have a usb port right here a port for the memory a port for the mic or the aux cable, home button, skip, pretty basic buttons. Got some random stickers just laying around. Okay, so I do see a big wiring mess on here. I do see this base plate in the way. Um, I know this can pop out pretty easily. Okay, so this will come out. And now we're left with this. I do have the wiring for the AEM gauges, which I'm gonna go ahead and redo because I do want to go ahead and place all the gauges up right here where the OEM ones go. But that will be for another video. So based on what I can see, this looks to me like it's the OEM harness and it's connected to some sort of other harness that connects to the back of the radio. So let's start off by taking off the single din stereo. I see four Phillips screwdrivers holding it into the brackets. So normally how the OEM wiring would work is you have the OEM harness here. You have the harness that you would have to buy separately, which I linked down in the description as well. You then have to match every single wire into the double din harness, which is right here. But the issue is, since this thing already had aftermarket wiring, from what I know, these are aftermarket speaker wires. It just becomes a big mess and a big rat's nest that you kind of have to figure out. And just for quick reference, normally when you would buy the aftermarket harness to plug into this, normally it would just plug in straight up like that. So this would plug into your OEM harness and this would just plug into the back of the radio. Unfortunately, I guess due to having aftermarket speakers, uh, we won't be using the normal, I guess, speaker wires on the aftermarket harness that you have to get. Either way, if you have the OEM speakers, then you could just go ahead and wire everything out separately, which makes the job much cleaner and much simpler. Uh, but unfortunately, since we have these aftermarket speaker wires, uh, we're basically going to have to tap in to this partially and then tap in to the aftermarket harness for the power and the ground as well. So mine's a little more complex. Hopefully you have the OEM speaker so you're just able to go ahead and plug everything in directly. All you have to do is basically match the colors to the harness. So for example, green and black, green being the power wire, black being the ground wire. You look for the green wires on the harness for the double din. And just to show you guys for quick reference, so you guys can see it says rear left positive and then rear left 
negative. So this is ground, this is power. You go ahead and match the ground to the ground. So black to the negative side and the power to the positive side. And you basically have a working speaker. So we have to do that for all four sides here. So as far as materials being used for this job, you have the wire cutters here, the wire strippers, and then you have these crimpers. And of course, we're just using some butt connectors here. So there's different sizes. I'm using these blue ones. Um, again, like I said, you could find these all at your local hardware store or like Harbor Fate or something. that the speaker wires are done all you have to do is match the colors and make sure that the ground goes to the negative and the power goes to the positive now we're ready to move on to the remainder of the wires focus on these next four wires so the yellow here is for constant power the red here reads accessory slash ignition the black is a ground and the blue is for the antenna So this pink one is for the rear view camera, which the radio did come with. I personally do not want to run one just because I don't want to mount it in the back of the car. It's too bulky for me. So we'll be using this. Uh, you do have both of these wires, which are just pretty much a uh, steering wheel key uh, wires. So I won't be using those either. I do have this one, which is basically a dimmer. So during the day, your radio will be brighter. During the night, your radio will be a little bit darker, but I won't be running that as well. I do have this parking brake which basically doesn't allow you to see any videos while you're driving it's just like a safety measure i won't be hooking that up and then i do have this amplifier which i don't have on the car so these wires aren't being used um, of course as you guys know the speaker wires mine's a little bit more complex just because i already had an aftermarket stereo on there this is pretty much what we came up with at this point we're ready to start mounting the uh, double dent on here and see how it looks i already had it did the left side so a total basically gives you this bracket which you have to place on the side here and then they give you like these universal style brackets but i did want to go ahead and reuse the oem brackets that came on the single din uh, but basically you after you mount this you go ahead and mount the stock bracket and you now have the possibility to mount the uh, screws that were there originally.
before I mount the radio back on, I do want to mention that this plug here is for your antenna, which you're going to plug in the back of the stereo right over here. The Double Dan also did come with a mic, which you guys see here. That one basically gets hooked up to there and you route it anywhere in the car where you want it hanging. This is just part of the harness that you're going to connect. And of course, the harness that came with the radio gets hooked up right over here. I was able to put it on with these stock brackets. I'm gonna go ahead and put this, I uh, came with the radio, I guess it just kinda solidifies this piece. And of course we have, oh, damn it. okay, we have a new stock thing here. Uh, let's see if it fits flush with this thing. Check this out. Push it in all the way. Bam, that actually looks really good. It looks like it's meant to go with the car. It really modernizes the car by a lot in my opinion. It looks really good. I like it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below, but um, I should have probably checked to see if it works before I put everything back together. Moment of truth, ignition. Okay, we got power. Nice, nice, okay. Um, source off. How do I do this? Okay, so Bluetooth connecting. <laughs> That's sick. Allow to pair, check number on your phone. Okay, so Miguel DSM works with Apple CarPlay. Tap okay, sick. All right, so here we have the home page. I already see phone, music, maps, messages, now playing Google Maps. So it does have navigation. That's actually pretty sick. All right, I don't want to show you guys my address, but. Still have to set it up, but just off the bat, it looks really good. You do have access to navigation, which I didn't even know. Access to your phone, access to your text, access to your Spotify. Um, it's pretty much all you need, so I still have to go through the settings and figure this out. Oh, well, I'm getting a call from Turkey. Who's calling me from Turkey, bro? Let's see, decline. Okay, so that works. So Apple Music. Yes, sir. So the install was an overall success. You guys let me know what you guys think of the radio. And of course, like I said, I will link both the radio and the harness you will need in the video description in case you guys want to rock the same thing. And just for, based off my review, it fits super flush. It's what I love the most. It looks just like an iPhone and it works. So everything's there for you. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you guys have any additional questions, let me know in the comment section below. The Double Din radio has officially been installed on the VR4. This looks super good. It modernizes the interior a lot, and I love how flush it is. Stay tuned for the timing belt video on the VR4 coming soon. It should be here this week as far as the package getting delivered. I do have to come back and spend the day here with Aaron over at Mace Performance to install it, but I will have a full, I guess, tutorial video on how to do that as well. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully this car is out on the road soon so you can try out that Neo radio. And uh, yeah, so make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.